Welcome to my review of the HiVi T200C Active Desktop Studio Monitors. HiVi is a Chinese company that's received lots of attention lately. Their uh, individual drivers have been used in many different speakers and speaker kits, including the Overnight Sensations, which if you don't know, have been an incredibly popular, cheap DIY speaker kit, which sound amazing. Recently, they, their sister company Swans have released their Swans M1 um, computer speaker system, which consists of two satellites and a subwoofer. And those were on mass drop for a little bit and they sold out so fast and there was like two or three runs of them on mass drop and they were, you know, number one best selling speaker on, you know, Amazon and they were an amazing value. And people really, that brought high volume Swans a lot of attention. Now, Swans has not really received as much coverage in the West on their speaker systems until recently, and I'm going to be reviewing today their T200C, which is their um, sort of mid-level active studio desktop monitor. The T200Cs go for around $500. Uh, their, their MSRP is $500, although you can find them for around $450 if you look in the right places. And they are an interesting product because they bridge the, a lot of the gaps between sort of desktop computer speakers and studio monitors. They feature a almost perfectly flat frequency response, but they also feature Bluetooth 4.0. They're built incredibly well and an amazing weight to them, but they also look super modern. The T200Cs are overall a really a unique speaker in that they work for many different situations. And today we're gonna to be looking at um, what makes them so great and just doing you know a basic physical overview. So for the overview, on the front of the speaker you have a five and a quarter inch high vi um, aluminum cone woofer. It also has a 0.8 inch um, metal dome tweeter which I'll talk about later. Now this design is interesting because it's a fully active crossover with four channels of amplification. Now if you don't know what any of that means I'll explain it really quickly. Now in a standard speaker you have a crossover which uh, takes your full range signal and splits it up into high frequencies and low frequencies for the tweeter and the woofer to play respectively and if it's a more than two way speaker so a three way or four way speaker there'd be you know highs, lower highs, high mids and low frequencies so you know they'd be split up more and more ways. But the disadvantages with the physical crossover are that they can color the sound, they can introduce phase shift, and they are overall a lot harder to tune than an active crossover. Now an active crossover means that the crossover is all done before the actual channels of amplification, and there'd be individual channels of amplification for each driver. So in this, these two speakers, there are four channels of amplification. Now each side is 70 watts which is more than enough for the average listener, and I'll talk more about how loud they play when I talk about their audio quality. Um, the cool thing about the T200C is that they offer features that lots of other studio monitors don't offer. For example, the JBL LSR 305s don't have a three-band EQ with adjustable um, high-pass filter for the bass, and they don't have built-in volume control. Um, and they don't have Bluetooth, but the T200Cs do have all of those, which makes it definitely more of a sort of accessible option for people that aren't really as into audio or don't want to spend money on external volume controllers or EQs, um, where the T200C would be sort of an all-in-one package. Um, on the front of the speaker, there is a piece of aluminum. This is a nice sort of textured aluminum plate that's triangular and on a slight angle, and it really makes the speakers look really modern and pop, and it's a really nice contrast against the piano black uh, glossy finish. Now, on the back of the speaker, you have the, an aluminum plate which houses all of your controls and um, inputs for the right speaker, and on the left speaker, it just has the port and power and uh, the uh, left speaker input, and I'll talk about that in a second. So on the back of the right speaker, you have your three band EQ, which um, has points at 200 hertz, 500 hertz, and 10,000 hertz respectively. So that's your low, mid, and high frequency points. You also have an adjustable high pass filter, which is really useful, especially if you're considering blending these in with subwoofers. A high pass filter, for those who don't know, is a filter which um, decreases or adds sort of a roll off to the uh, sub bass so that the speaker doesn't play subwoofer you know, bass uh, information. And 
the lowest setting you can go on these speakers is 52 hertz, which is great if you're not using a subwoofer. But if you're using a subwoofer, I'd set mine to the 72 hertz setting, um, which will make blending into the subwoofer a lot easier and will take unnecessary strain off the amplifier and woofer of your speaker. This is a really cool feature that almost no active speakers have unless you're looking at like Genelex or a really high-end brand. Um, the speakers also have a volume control which is adjustable on their remote as well as a balance uh, control which is adjustable on their remote which is a really cool um, feature. Although the balance is not adjustable on the speakers so if you mess up the balance and you lose your remote you're kind of stuck. Your options for inputs is that you have two XLR left and right inputs and a, the Bluetooth 4.0 input that I talked about earlier. Um, the XLR inputs can be connected to a full balanced XLR or to RCA inputs via the included XLR to RCA cables and also they include an RCA to 3.5 millimeter jack. So if you want to plug it into a phone, computer, it's super easy to do that as well. Um, connecting the right speaker to the left speaker is an XLR4 cable. This is a sort of professional grade cable that you can't really buy. And the only downside to this is that it wasn't long enough to span my, the full gap of my uh, listening room. So I had to move my stands in a little bit and that definitely changed the way my room sounded. So I, I, it's hard for me to compare these speakers to other speakers in that room because of the limitation of that cable. It's around six foot wide. Now that's plenty wide enough for most desktop listening solutions. My one complaint about the overall design and build of these speakers is that they have this weird sort of hump on the back. You can see that the size of the speaker actually changes. It goes from this large piano black thing to this smaller square on the back. You can see here it's a lot smaller. And I, I'm curious at why they did this. Um, my original thought was, oh, it's easy to wall mount. But then I was like, why would you want to wall mount these speakers? I mean, I guess it would make sense, but it would look kind of strange with this you know, one inch thick thing protruding from the wall. Um, but I couldn't really figure it out, but the good thing is, is if you're using these on a desktop, you'll almost never see the side or back of them. But if you're putting these on stands in sort of the middle of the room, you see the back of them all the time. So I'm a little confused at why um, they created this design feature. Now I want to move on to sound quality. I tested these speakers in three different scenarios. Very close range, so that would be like your desktop. A medium range, which is like four or five feet away. And a sort of full range, you know, uh, listening room distance which at least in my room is around 10 feet away from the listener. Overall, the sound on the desktop was amazing. The center image was really strong. Um, the bass actually went down quite far. Uh, they even sounded really tight, even though, um, at least on my desktop, they were pushed really close to the wall. And they were, these are rear ported speakers, of course, and the bass was really tight. So that tells me it's a really good ported design. Um, and the port is definitely large enough so that you don't have excessive port noise or you know, uh, port velocity. Um, and also they got way too loud to be used on a desktop. I don't think there will, anyone will be complaining about volume on a desktop. They sounded amazing. Blending in with subwoofers is another really good uh, thing that these speakers did. It blended in with all four of the subwoofers I had laying around really well and really easily. I almost didn't have to do any sort of tinkering. I just set it up and it sounded amazing straight out the box. And that's another perk of having an active crossover. Um, sometimes, or not sometimes, all passive crossovers, um, because of their use of capacitors, resistors, inductors, uh, the, that sort of thing in them, they uh, apply a phase shift to some parts of the audio and to some drivers. So for example, like a capacitor is a 90 degree phase shift. And an active crossover, depending on the implementation has no phase shift at all, and that means blending in with subwoofers is seamless, and it sounded really, really good. Moving on to a mid-range sound, uh, I think these is, this is where the speakers excel the best. They play loud enough. The sound stage is much wider, obviously, because the speakers are farther apart from each other. Um, imaging is still really tight, and bass performance and everything else is uh, excellent as well. The only situation where these didn't perform as well is long range listening, where when you really cr tried to crank them at a long distance, they broke up and definitely, you know, they don't play as loud as you'd probably like uh, at a very long distance. So I would try to keep these within sort of six feet away from you um, if, you were, if you listen to music loud like I do. Although at that 10 foot listening distance, once I had it blended into my subwoofer, it, uh, it definitely took a lot of the stress off the woofers and it you know, overall sounded a lot better. But if you're going to use these alone at a distance of 10 feet, either keep the volume down or you know, try to figure out a way to position the speakers closer to you. Overall, uh, the sound quality came off as incredibly neutral. I couldn't really think of any 
area except for one where the curve would be not neutral. And that one area is at the crossover point, which on these speakers is listed at 2.6 kilohertz. Um, it sounded a little bit uh, shouty at that, at that point where the tweeter and the woofer where they you know, crossed over kind of shouted out. So in some recordings when I was listening to female vocals, the, some notes of the, the vocals would really shout out at you and it would, it would catch me off guard. I'd be listening to music at a normal level and then all of a sudden it would be like, whoa, that's really loud. Um, but that's the only real gripe I have about the sound quality of these speakers. Other than that, it's, they're really amazing. And if you have some sort of EQ or DSP solution like I do, I was able to really easily take that out with literally just one filter uh, at 2.6 kilohertz. I knocked it down a couple of decibels and it sounded great. Um, but uh, it's definitely a, gets a little worse the closer the speakers are to you. If the speakers are, you know, four feet away from you, it's not as noticeable if they're right in your face where it can be a little shouty. I'd definitely be happy listening to these speakers um, all day with that, with that little shoutiness. I want to talk about the tweeter, actually. This is one of the best uh, Metal Dome tweeters I've ever heard, period. Like, it's incredibly good. Uh, it's, it's definitely very detailed and very clear, but it's not fatiguing at all. For example, I had another pair of Metal Dome uh, speakers that I had demoing next to these, and they were significantly more fatiguing than these speakers, and I could listen to these speakers all day and not be fatigued. Um, it was really nice to hear that out of a Metal Dome. It's really shown how far Metal Domes have come um, in these past few years. Um, the clarity of the treble is incredible. I had a friend of mine that was listening to these and they were like, wow, that's really, really clear. I had these next to JBL LSR 305s and a pair of LSR 308s, which I borrowed, and the clarity of the treble on these was not anywhere, was so much better than the JBLs, although the JBLs did have, obviously, the waveguide, so off-axis performance was a little better on the JBLs. But if you're on axis, I feel like these definitely have the better tweeter. Um, in terms of mid-range, the mid-range is really clear, um, although it can lean on the side of analytical if I, if I you know, have any negative comments. It's definitely a little bit of a more analytical sound versus a warm, sort of enveloping sound. So if you are the person that's going to pair these with a preamplifier or some sort of source gear, um, maybe a tube-based tube, tube -based system would be uh, a good place to take a look at gear because that'll definitely help sort of warm up a little bit of that mid-bass area. Although for someone like me that is definitely more of a listener that prefers an analytical kind of cold sound, these really did well in my book. Although I wouldn't say they're cold, I'd just say they don't have sort of like a balloony warmth, bubbly warmth, uh, like a lot of you know modern speakers have, because definitely that's a sort of tuning characteristic of modern speakers, like audio engines have that warmth that just comes up and I don't really like it, but that's just me personally. Really briefly, I wanted to touch on the Bluetooth performance. I tried Bluetooth, it's Bluetooth 4.0, and it really sounded like, it sounded pretty good for Bluetooth. Although, you know, obviously from an audiophile point of view, and this channel is an audiophile channel, it's not like a lifestyle channel. From an audiophile point of view, I definitely recommend uh, not using the Bluetooth input and trying to stick to the analog inputs if you can, um, or finding some sort of Wi-Fi based streamer like a Google Chromecast um, on the hi-fi mode would work well. Um, there's plenty of Wi-Fi streamers out there that would definitely do a better job at taking the audio from your phone or computer and moving it to these speakers in a less lossy way um, because Bluetooth overall is just a lossy format. But it is really, really cool to see a, a product that's marketed as a studio monitor, as a monitor style speaker, have Bluetooth. It really shows that, you know, hi and Swans care about, you know, appealing to a larger audience because, you know, lots of times when People ask me, oh, what's your recommendation on the speakers? I'd say, oh, you know, for speakers for like $250, oh, JBL LSR 305s. And, and, then and then I'd have to say, but you need a volume control and you need, if you want Bluetooth, you need a Bluetooth receiver and you need this and you need this. You need all these sort of crazy cables. But with the T200Cs, yes, they are more expensive, but they have all that, you know, straight out of the box. They work straight out of the box for everything, you know, definitely a more of a user-friendly style speaker. Overall, I wanted to conclude this review just by saying these are excellent speakers for the price. I find it very hard to find a speaker around the same price that would sound better, as I said, and I highly recommend that if you're in the market for speakers in the $500 range and you don't want to buy amps and you don't want to have all these extra little pieces, the T200Cs are certainly an amazing option in this price range, and they look really cool too. I've seen speakers that are like $2,000, $3,000 that don't look as good as these. They really have a cool design to them. 
Um, so overall, I'm really pleased with these speakers. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'm to read all the comments, so um, I'd love to answer some of your questions about these speakers if there's something in this review that I didn't touch on that you'd like to know. Thanks a lot for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos um, and leave a comment um, giving your thoughts on the video or if you have any questions. Thanks a lot and happy listening.